the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Tonight, I'm stimulating a hunger in you. Don't say, I've been 10 years in the Lord. Congratulations. But what do you know? And what do you not know? Do you understand the keys that can replicate the glory, the power, the grace of God? I am very broken and humbled by our fathers, the great men of God over this city, who have painstakingly taken the time to come and sit in this conference. For me, there is no greater show of humility than what they have done. Because these are men with results in their own regards. But then to come and sit and learn. And yet there are many young people who have not even started ministry. Moving around in small groups and their arrogance will not let them learn. I'm not being sarcastic. The proof of transformation among many things is humility. And awareness that there is so much you do not know. I made up my mind that I would study these keys. I knew that I came from a background where favor was a luxury. I didn't see many people who represented favor. And I knew I was in ministry. And I didn't want to compromise to start manipulating people. I, I, I said, Lord, show me these keys so that I don't go around, you know, defrauding people. I want to do ministry with integrity. For one month, I prayed and I studied about favor. I don't want the distraction. Do you know money can distract? Lack of it. If, if you are not in ministry or you are not a leader, you will never understand. That lack of money can make you to be awake in the night and yet you are not praying. It's a very evil, evil thing. Are we together? There are many well-behaved people who lack of money change them. And I made up my mind. And for one month, I studied on this mystery of favor. And I found some keys. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part. I found from scripture. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. That when favor is upon you, the only person that cannot bless you is a blind person. But for as long as they have eyes to see, there is a grace that compels men to bless you. I also found in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. So emptiness has an explanation. And then for a long time in church, I was told that favor was unmerited. And the Holy Ghost told me not so. Favor is merited. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. Good understanding procured favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. There is a mother that gives birth to a child and the name of that child is favor. The name of the mother is good understanding. There is what you can understand. To bring favor favor is predictable it is programmable I travel a lot I come from the north my life is surrounded by so many risks I had to go to the Word of God to find out the key to longevity in this wicked and evil world listen to me don't feel offended. I'm, this is an apostolic conference. And so God is shaking us and challenging us. And then I began to search. And I found certain principles. Honor your father and your mother. 
that your days may be long and it shall be well with you. This is why many young people is not well with them. Because our pride will make us insult anyone. You have your revelation, you will insult your pastor or you. You don't have any revelation, you are not anointed. And while you are saying that, you don't know that that act of disobedience is raising an altar in the spirit. The Bible says, I shall not die but live and declare. So if you are alive and you are not supporting the cause of God's kingdom, your living is a waste. The condition that you shall not die is that you are declaring the works of the Lord. Are we together? I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. Choose life. You are drunk and on your, you're on your way on the road and there is a truck coming. You have chosen death. That truck will hit you and kill you and that will be the end of it. This is the implication of choosing life. Listen, I agree that you've given your life to Christ. The next assignment in the name of the Lord Jesus is to be like a spiritual archaeologist and begin to search for the mysteries of the kingdom that, that command exact outcomes. You come from a family where nobody has ever risen. Don't take that risk of hoping that life will just manufacture a way of victory and give it to you. You have to go to the word and find out. It is for this cause he gave unto some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints. That the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry. To the end that we corporately as a people, we come into the fullness of of the measure of the stature of Christ. He says, not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men, wherein they lie to deceive. There must be an appetite, not just for Bible study. There must be an appetite, not just for devotionals. There must be an appetite, not just for studying Greek and Hebrew so that you can preach. A quest for light exact kingdom principles that are patterns that control certain outcomes the brief time we had with your dear pastor our father we we're just talking in the office and he began to talk to me and we we're discussing the issue of rest do you know that many people have died not because of Satan they have died because of sheer exhaustion in ministry and yet there is a pattern one of the scariest scripture in, in the Bible is and God rested not an angel God rested if God rested then man must rest to survive if man does not rest there will be a consequence for that. The consequence is that your body will be so deteriorated, your spirit will no longer be able to live there. There is a requisite level of health in your body that your spirit needs to remain in. When it becomes so damaged, the spirit will leave. You call it death. So, having found this, you now learn to shut, you know, years ago, I used to, be there for everybody people will call and say apostle you told us God sent you to us and I just come and I can't rest they will sleep they are happy when they are alive they are healthy they stretch and they start ringing my phone and I feel guilty every time I don't ignore them I mean I ignore them because I say oh God I, I promise you that I will serve your people one day the Lord delivered me let me tell you the story of my deliverance the Lord asked me to look at the crucifix in a church the crucifix you know that and I found out for the first time that my face was not the one there that I am only pointing people to the one that died that I am not the one that died now you may laugh but it was a deliverance for me I probably would have been dead by now
Now listen to me. We are going to pray. The Lord brought us to this conference to give us light. Now while you are sitting, you can see that many of the things you have blamed God about, God has no hand in it. It is you're not understanding the methodical approach to the kingdom life. You're now seeing, oh, I have helpers all around me and nobody wants to help me. I can tell you with, with razor sharp accuracy, the principle you have failed to observe, it is called dishonor. Dishonor is the reason why many helpers around you have refused to help you. I can tell you why your spiritual life is down. Because for your spiritual health, the menu for your spiritual health is the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. It is a non-negotiable condition. Whether you are a preacher or not, if it is for you to be healthy, you must have an appetite and a discipline. Praying and studying the word is more than a desire. It is a discipline. It has nothing to do with convenience. It's a covenant. It's a discipline. If you allow desire alone to guide your spiritual growth, you will never grow. Because there are times you will not want to study the Bible. You are for legitimate reasons. Rain beats you, you came back home, you are tired, or you ate swallow, you ate something heavy, you are feeling sleepy. These are natural laws, but you have to discipline yourself. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame. I don't study the Bible just because it's convenient. You think because God has called me into an apostolic ministry, I have a supernatural desire for scripture just like that anytime. It's not true. There are times I want to sleep too. But then when you think about the burden of your growth and the burden of a generation that is on your back, you will stand up immediately and shake off that sleep and get to work. There is a lot of indiscipline in the body of Christ. We are people of convenience. You pray when it is convenient. You study when it is convenient. No, you will not grow that way. This already is a deliverance for someone. Because you think just because the Holy Spirit is at work in you, automatically he will move you to just go and open your Bible and be smiling. You know, we talk a lot about the word of God. We love the word of God. Some of us even kiss it. The truth is when all the stakes are down, it takes discipline. There are times you stare at the word of God almost as if you will flog it. But you have to read it to know. Do you know the amount of time and research and study it takes to prepare one message? One. One serious message. It takes time. So if you are saying, God, call me, bring me into ministry. I want to minister your purposes to the nations. He looks at you and says, even though you have that desire, you do not yet know the pattern that it takes to be a man of God who is not ashamed. The key is to study to show yourself approved. Is God revealing areas in our lives where we need to work on? You don't pray for five minutes and just yawn. Ten minutes, yawn. You are baffing. That's when you pray in tongues. Shala, ba, 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 ba. And you are baffing and then you finish and you want to carry spiritual power. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But you must take God more serious than that. If it's authentic power you want to carry. There was a time in my life I spent 72 hours non-stop. 72 hours. My eye did not know whether it was day or night. Generating energy and power in the spirit. Let's respect the sacrifices of people. This is a generation that has no regard for the sacrifice of people. Are we blessed? There is a level of hunger that I'm trusting that God will put in our lives tonight. I desire to walk in the anointing and I took time to study. There is, there is almost nobody on earth who is known historically who has worked in the supernatural power of God that have not studied their materials. 
It's not just that I was sitting and Jesus came to me. Ask him. I had to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. There is hardly any calm ground in this nation I've not gone to. To take out time to pray. Quietly I smuggle myself or I take advantage of times when I go to preach. You've heard my story, many of you in, in the message of an encounter that, that happened in Ekiti. I found out that there was a grace for long life in a very strange way there. I finished ministering there and I was on my way back. I didn't say I'm a man of God. I stopped there and I went to that city. It was a Christian place, a small place. I didn't find anybody there who was speaking English. And we said, who is the oldest man that lives in this city? Please tell them that we are men of God and that we want him to pray for the grace for long life. I didn't do big manism because the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. 140 something years 130 something years that's not a mistake in this wicked world are we together we're going to pray i remember we finally found someone who does not speak yoruba very well and that, or does not speak english very well and we said please help us interpret to that baba and we said sir we came to tap the grace for long life. He said, kneel down. He didn't even say, are you a man of God? Are you a big man? He said, kneel down, two of you, all of you, kneel down. Those who have this thing know they have it. When that man began to pray, I tell you the truth and I lie not. I felt like a crown was just put upon my head. And when he finished, brought out a seed and gave him, we are on our way to go and enter the car when they now showed me the wife of the man who just died at 132 i think she probably will be a hundred and something and yet she was standing looking like our father here i said let's go back the man is dead but the wife is alive two have become one i went back and i tapped the woman i said madam they should they should interpret please your husband is dead but he's alive in you whatever grace kept you this long and the woman tapped me said come follow me we entered the room and she started showing me pictures from before my parents were born she was the wife of his youth now, I, i'm trying to show you something please just understand what i'm telling you and i said i'm a man of god let me carry that grace too among the graces that i carry to every region as a way of keeping god's people strong for the end time assignment and the woman said kneel down she took off two of her shoes when a woman removes her shoe to pray for you my brother even if you understand what they are saying or not just receive it with all your heart that woman prayed from the depth of her heart and that's why every time i travel and there are impartations there are many graces that fall on people many graces and tonight I'm praying in the name of Jesus that among the many graces that will fall on you that these two will rest on your life. Yeah. Are we blessed? When the Lord revealed his angel to me and said this angel will walk with you he's called the angel of the Lord's presence will be responsible for the signs the wonders the revivals the awakenings that happen across regions and territories on the strength of that encounter every time I travel I travel with joy do you know why not to go and showcase a man of God who is anointed but an opportunity to be an extension of those possibilities to the body of Christ so that the regions that hitherto have not experienced those dimensions or to the fullness that should be can now receive a supply of those dimensions our time is up we have to pray but listen to me when you give god your heart your next assignment 
is to know his ways you must sit down lord what is the key to this outcome not if it will happen it will happen no sir what is the key to revival the key to revival according to scripture has always been the ministry of prayer with fasting for a very long time read history every time there was a move of god within a territory there had to be intercessors who invested the ministry of prayer with fasting for a prolonged period one month fasting will not bring revival it takes people who are intercessors as a call that means if you are trusting that God should bring revival in Enugu, you are also praying that the spirit of prophetic intercession must fall on people. Men and women who can take a weekend and cry before God and say, Lord, let the rain fall. Let the rain fall. Let the rain fall. Let the rain fall. While that person is praying like Anna the prophetess, there is a young boy somewhere in your university campus who will be minding his business and that prayer starts having an effect in him. God starts searching for those revivalists. A young lady will leave her mother's house going to the shop. On the way she has an encounter, God begins to recruit that army like a terrorist group. But while that is happening, the spirit, remember, the pattern is before God shows up, Elijah must precede him. Elijah is the spirit of revival. Elijah is not just a man. It's an apostolic and prophetic system that foreruns every move of God. So every time God is about to show up in a territory, the pattern is that Elijah must show up. Suddenly prayer groups begin to rise. Suddenly women, you know women are gates in the spirit. Women suddenly begin to pray. They don't even know what is driving them to pray. Groups that have no name and have no leader, they are not interested in titles. Someone begins to pray from his bedroom. Then the wife joins him. Then the neighbor joins him. They are not looking for ministry. It's a position of birthing. Because something is about to be delivered. This is already happening to some of you. There are women right now throughout this year. You found out that your sleep is no longer normal. It's the cry of the spirit. Would you deny a territory of revival? Would you allow sleep to rob a territory of revival? There are young men. Once it is night, it's as if you don't want to be among people. You find the back of one building and sit down on a stone there. Shakata badakata. Whereas you are the you are one of the revivalists that God is preparing. Let me tell you this: when God is preparing men, He never tells you you are part of the army because He does not want to distract your focus. If He tells you pride will eat you up. So he will allow you to continue. Even when you have passed the test, he will not tell you. Seated in this place right now, at the next level of greater than the Joshua Selmans. See, some of you are seated here. You know, when you ask who are the most anointed people, they will easily point at us. Not so. There are people who are in the cave of Adulam. They are not yet on TV. They don't even have the name of a ministry. There is the dealing of the spirit. I came to encourage you, don't stop. You are almost there. You don't understand the name of your training. It's a furnace of affliction. You have those visions. And the Lord says, keep writing it. Keep writing it. Don't stop. It's the betting of something heavy. Your fathers have seen the revival coming upon Enugu. Your fathers have seen the revival coming upon the east of the Niger. But there are patterns that must be kept. The glory of God is hovering round. The face of this city is saying, where are the men and the women that are ready to cry, to travel as to a woman who is about to give birth? Where are the men and women who will say, Maranatha, come, come, come. Let the apostolic fire come. Maranatha, let the prophetic fire come. Let our altars be altars of fire, not just altars of discussion. Find me, find my family. 
Someone lift your voice and pray. I am available, oh God. I'm available, oh God. I'm available, oh God. As the spirit of prayer moves the length and breadth of this city, I am available. As the mantle of the prophetic moves across the length and the breadth of this city, I am available. Someone pray. Someone pray. As the Davidic order of Samistry moves across the length and the breadth of this state, I am available. Please listen to me. I want you to let me just a few minutes. We're stepping into a very prophetic, defining moment. This is my last session tonight. Something is about to come upon your destiny. Please listen. Please listen. Listen. These guys, you have done well. Thank you. Thank you. Let me pray for you. Eh? Just hold my hand. Grace for you. 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 Grace for you new dimension in the spirit i speak over your lives by the power of the holy spirit you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now please listen listen he said my head has thou exalted like the horn of an unicorn and i am anointed there are people whose spiritual lives have gone down Please be sensitive. Begin to bring them out. Hold on. There are people here who are called into the ministry of the prophetic. It's time to activate that grace now. You have seen it in dreams and visions. Men, women. There is a grace upon my life. I see the eye of an eagle. And every time I see the eagle, it's a signature of the prophetic. I stretch my hand, Enugu State. East of the Niger. I come to you by a prophetic and apostolic mandate that all those who are called into the prophetic at the count of three, may that mantle rest upon your life. One, two, three. Take that grace. Bring them out. Take that grace. I stare up the prophetic. I stare up the prophetic. There are ladies here. Drink. Of the wells of Deborah carry the warrior spirit. I release you an unction upon your life. <laughs>
women. Parato shalakata, embrakata kato koto prekete kete kete kete. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. The Lord is opening my eyes in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing written above this church, Elijah. Elijah is the spirit of prayer and supplication. There is a mantle for prayer that is resting on people right now. The quickening of the spirit at the count of three. Fire upon your altar. One, two, three. Take that fire. Let there be a bathing. Prophetic intercessors, men and women, who will fast and pray the revival that is needed to come upon this state, needed to come upon the east of the Niger. Skabaranta salakata prakatoshate. Bring them out. Fire upon your prayer life. Fire upon your prayer life. I found that altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is Ugochuku? I'm hearing a name Ugochuku. No, no, no. Hold on, please. Please be orderly. Hold on. No. This man is like is, is a, a middle-aged man. You are wearing blue. A blue, complete blue overall. No, blue. Top, down, and up. Blue. Is there someone like that? What's your name, sir? You are a member of this church, sir. You are a pastor. Where? What's the name of the church? Just give me a few minutes. Sir, I'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is telling me there is a prophetic grace that is coming upon your life in a strange way. Please come. In the name of Jesus Christ, carry that grace right now. Step into that new dimension. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. There are two pastors I'm seeing in the spirit. The spirit of prophecy is coming upon them now. Two men of God. You are actively in ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know where you are, but wherever you are, may that anointing come upon you right now. Sir, I don't know who this gentleman is. At the back of our father this man you are a priest just stand where you are you are a priest but i'm looking at you in the spirit and the lord is saying you will have a mighty healing ministry there is a grace for healing that the lord is putting upon your hands i've never seen you i don't know you i pray for you sir in the name of jesus christ may that grace and may that anointing come upon your life you will lay hands on the sick and you will watch with precision the Lord will bring healing for them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is there a name like Nkechi? Nkechi. And Nkechi. That, that's somebody's name. Who has a name like that? Nkechi. Our time is fast spent. We have to close. My dear, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. The power that sits on the destiny of both you and your family members. I arrest it right now. I command that it gives way right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
please i i don't know but i don't know who this woman is but in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing a very mighty woman and the lord is saying there is a dimension of this revival that the grace is on her this woman please don't i hope i hope you are not embarrassed madam i'm seeing there is a mighty grace this is this has to do with the prophetic intercession and healing these three ministries the prophetic intercession and healing these three dimensions and the lord is saying he's going to multiply that grace i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus a multiplication of that grace by the power of the holy spirit That is uh, the pastor, our father here. One of his daughters is going to carry a very strange grace of influence. This is what the Lord is showing me. One of our daddy's daughters. In the name of Jesus. One... Where are his daughters? That, that's the general of Asias. Come. You will all be great. But I'm seeing there's one of you. There is the grace that was on Esther. This grace is on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these ladies by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. The grace for influence. Influence over systems over structures my dear i don't know your name but an angel is pouring oil on you this one in the name of jesus drink of that wine you will be a mighty woman in the name of jesus you are a lady but you have the strength of a man you that i'm talking to and the lord himself i'm seeing you run and even when others are weak and falling you are continuing you are just moving i pray for you in the name of jesus christ that grace for revival let it rest upon your life that grace for revival let it rest upon your life in the name of jesus christ there is a family here the lord is showing me nobody has settled down maritally in that family you don't have to come out the power of god i'm seeing one two three four four of them right now wherever you are the anointing of the holy spirit is resting upon you he's breaking that yoke now in the name of jesus at the count of three that grace is locating people and breaking that yoke one two three may that grace break every delay now the cause and the ordinance of darkness that is stopping people from moving to settle marital in your family i come against it in the name of jesus i come against it in the name of jesus hallelujah if you are trusting god for a miracle in any part of your body please lay your hands there right now lay your hands there right now someone on this row i'm seeing the power of god come on one person a very strong anointing i just saw like a wind just came to rest on someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god this row that i'm facing i just saw a wind father whoever that person is may that grace right now rest upon that person and shift that person to a new dimension in the spirit in the name of jesus christ please lay your hands i want to pray for you this is 25 years of God's faithfulness over this assembly. We want to pray and cancel age-long challenges. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Let me look at that woman. I'm seeing a snake just moving up and down that woman. Please shift. I command that devil out of her now. In the name of Jesus Christ release the destiny of that woman that woman seated in the name of jesus release her right now in the name of jesus christ the bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered i pray for everyone here whatever is keeping you in captivity right now as i speak 
be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I pray for the sick. Every blood disease here. In the name of Jesus be healed right now. Migraines be healed in the name of Jesus. Every bone condition be healed in the name of Jesus. Every eye condition be healed in the name of Jesus. Partial deafness, complete deafness be healed in the name of Jesus. Every growth in your body. Shalakato sabrandagata. I command that growth out of your body now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whether I mention your case or not. Every ailment in your body according to the word of the Lord. I command you free right now forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to release the grace for speed in this place. Believe me there is a real grace for speed. Every time I pray that prayer. The power of God comes upon people and they start running physically. Please, whether you are an usher or not, protect them so they don't injure themselves. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that among the many graces that will rest upon your people, let this one right now. There are men and women here who have been delayed. There are families who have been delayed. At the count of three, I declare like the dew of Hammon, may that grace that makes for speed rest upon you. One, two, three take that grace now take that grace speed i speak speed to your destiny speed in career speed in ministry help them please i command speed i prophesy speed in the name of jesus no more delay for your family no more delay for your destiny i release into the realm of speed in the name of jesus christ supernatural speed 10 years in one year 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 hear me anyone here trusting God for a job lift your hands let's end this thing once and for all in the name of Jesus and by the measure of grace that God has put upon my life, I speak to you within now and three months. Like the ark that was in the house of Obed Edom, I speak to you, hear the word of the Lord. Between now and the next three months, return with a noble and an honorable job. Please believe it. Believe it. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. I say it again return with an honorable job every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now come back to life now i don't know who is sitting on what belongs to you Karis kabarata in the name of Jesus everything that is yours but has not entered your hand I push it to you by prophecy I push it to your destiny by prophecy if you are in the music ministry here please lift your hands it's time to anoint people into prophetic psalmistry, not just special numbers, songs that are.
pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 